So I thought at the beginning, could you write, like, tell me a sentence that means I read a book. I read a book. Okay. Um, do, do, do. I read a book. So, hon o yomu. Yes. Well, that wouldn't make sense. Oh, that is? Oh, that's okay. right. Hon o yomu means to read a book. And if you want to say I, in your case, you would probably say like, um, maybe ore wa. <laughs> I don't know, or boku. Boku wa hon o yomu. I would say watashi. So, like, since I know what I would say. Watashi wa hon o yomu, which is I read books. Um, I just wanted to double check if you knew how O worked. Uh, now we're going yep. to reread some sentences from last time. We'll do one at a time, and you'll tell me what do you think they say. All right. So, doko ni kaijo ga irun da yo. So, doko ni kaijo ga irun da yo. Oh, so you want to read everything first? Oh, uh, no. This right here is good. I was just making um, breaking points for you. So, okay. ga irun da yo? <clears throat> what does this mean? How about doko? So, doko means where? Yes. And kaiju? Kaiju means something really big. Yes. And how about iru? Iru is to exist. Yes. And then do you know what ndayo meant? That was like an interesting point. That I believe that was a rhetorical question. Exactly. So altogether, doko ni kaiju ga irundayo. What does that mean? Irundayo. So where is the really big thing or the really big monster? Yes, exactly. Great. And what is the next sentence? Uh, Jack wa unzari shitmasu. Unzari or just itta. Hi. Shitta itta. Yep. Mm. So Jack unzari shitta itta. Uh, I forgot what that word meant. How about itta? Do you know what that means? Itta is just to say. Yes. And unzari shitta is describing the way in which he said, Doko ni kaiju ga irun da yo? So with that context, do you have any idea of how he could have said this? Probably frustrated. Kind of. He's actually fed up in this. He's like fed up with oh. his sister. He's like, oh, where is the dinosaur? Doko ni kaiju ga irun da yo? Kind of more like, oh. Yeah. Um, and next is this just the thing that Annie says. Uh, hora, oika, kiti kuru. Uh, mori, no, mori he, kakurinai kia. So, he would be if this was a normal character, but it's a particle right now. Do you remember how it would be pronounced? Oh, uh, then it would be just an e. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Mm -mm. And then after that is kyoso, kyoso yo. Hi. Mm -mm. So hora just means look. Oikaki deku. Oikaki. Does that. Mm. Do you know what the kudu part of this is doing to the verb? No, I don't remember. So kuru means while doing the action, the subject of the sentence is heading toward the speaker. Oh, I see. Okay. So with that context, what do you think oikakete means since she's talking about a kaiju? So you're running away? That's a good guess. Uh, oikakete means to chase. So the subject is kaiju. Hora, kaiju wa oikakete kuru, which is the kaiju is 
coming to chase us, basically. It means it's chasing in the direction of us. So the kudu allows them to delete the, um, like, jack to ani o part, which is uh, who um, the kaiju is going to be chasing. That part can be deleted because we have kudu, which tells us the way in which he's chasing is toward the speaker with the good, yeah. yeah so because of that boom we can just drop that obviously she's chasing them if, if he's heading toward us and we can drop off who is doing it because she's talking about a kaiju we got the context there's no reason for her to talk about something else chasing them so look it's chasing us or something like that and then what is the next thing that she say uh mori e or no. Nakira. And then kya. So nakya has a meaning of must. So mori e kakure. Yes, from kakureru. Mm -mm. Mori means. What's the word? No, that was yori. What's mori? Hmm, what could well, it has the kanji of tree, not forest and multi forest? Yes, oh, okay. How about kakureru? Have you ever heard kakusu or kakurembo? I have not. Kakurembo means hide and seek. So, what do you think kakureru oh. means? So, hide and seek in the forest. So kakureru without kakurembo, this kakuren, kakureru, just the verb, not the noun kakurembo. Mm -hmm. The noun by itself is a normal verb, which has a meaning of to hide. Kakurembo means um, the game of hiding, if you're like directly translating it, but it has the meaning of hide and seek. It's the exact same game, basically. Kakurembo. I see. So it alone, it's uh, it's just hiding. Yes. So morie kakureru. So what does that mean then? Hiding in the forest. Yes. Exactly. And do you remember what kyoso meant? Kyoso. Uh, kyoso. It does not mean dinosaur. No, it that was a different not. word. Uh, dinosaur is kyoryu. So Kyoryu, kuso right. is um, Annie's kind of, so she created a kuso no sekai with these two, mm -hmm. but then she's kind of going in back into reality to tell Jack what her actual goal is. What she wants is for Jack and her to do a kyoso, and, but she created a fake reality where, oh, look, a dinosaur is coming to chase us and we have to hide in the forest. So a kyoso means a race that so, makes more sense yeah so she's saying okay let's go on a race then or i'll race yeah so she kind of leaves the fantasy world to actually tell jack what she wants him to do race me let's go run in the forest and hide sounds like a lot of fun that's what she thinks and she made it the kuso no sekai <laughs> where uh kyo kaiju exists um what is the next line? Mm. Soito. Is that so right? You Soito. Soito. Ani wa hitori de mori no hao or ho hoe. Hai. Yep. Ah, uh, hashite or hashite. Yeah, hashite iti shimasta. Shimashita. Yes. Or just shimatta. Yeah, shimatta. So this ite is very similar to this kudu we saw before. Do you know what it means? How is it? So different? I think it's different. So this time it's probably um, going towards the subject, right? So actually, it's still about the speaker in this case. Um, so kudu means toward the speaker and iku from ite means away from the speaker. All right, so, the opposite. In this case, we have a special narrator that likes to follow Jack around. So Jack stands here, and then there's like this weird ghost guy who's like narrating everything. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to kind of think about it. So knowing that, 
and that kyoso has this kanji in it. What does hashite mean? Hashite. So I'm guessing it's like hashi, where it's just to uh, walk. So oh, no, hashi is hanas. Aruku means to walk. And toho, toho means on foot. So what does hashiru mean? To run. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Um, do you know what the so you part means? So you. So does it have anything to do with so yokoto? Or is that something completely different? Uh, it's probably related to, to that. Uh, but this is pretty simple. We have you. Do you know what that meant? We saw ita earlier. It's almost the same thing. It's just to say. <laughs> yep, to say. And so is like that. So this means so you to say that. Which is this part. So Annie says this. To. What is this to doing? Uh, and and those are the only two things. It is an and. Um, in this case, this to is being used between two sentences. So you is like one sentence. It has we're we're basically quoting everything she said. So you could be like, Hora oi kakete kuru mori no kakure na kya kyo yo to. You to, that's what the soul part is doing. This whole thing is being conveyed with that soul. Uh, so, so Annie says, "Oh, let's go over and hide in the forest, Alracia, because there's a monster chasing us." Then, it's kind of what this toll means. It's kind of a event toll. So this happens, then this happens. Got it. But yeah, it looks exactly like the other toe, but the other toe you're thinking about is uses nouns. It's noun, toe, noun. But this is sentence. Toe sentence. Yes. And it can be hard to tell. Um, so now we have Ani wa hitori de mori no ho e hashite itte shimatta. So Ani ran to the forest. And then shimatta, so suddenly ran to the forest. Well, shimatta doesn't mean suddenly. What do you think Jack was feeling when Ani ran to the forest? Oh, he felt shimatta. So it was like, oh, damn. Damn, yep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He was very like shimatta. So he's not happy about this. And the omniscient uh, uh, narrator agrees. They're, they're very much on his side. Uh, and do you know what the hitori de meant? Oh, that means just alone. So exactly. she ran herself. It's just stressing that Jack did not run with her. Perfect. And what's the last sentence on this side? Uh, what is that? That's yuhi ga. Yuhi ga. Mori no muko ni shizumi hajimete iru. Mm. Yuhi ga. After that is mori no muko ni. So behind the forest, mm. Shizemi hajimete iru. So for the first time, Shizemi, no, Shizemi, yes. so quietly behind the forest. So this is very good guesses you're making. Um, so Muko actually more means like across from the forest. So we have the forest on this side, and then across the street, we have the Yuhi. Uh, what do you think Yuhi means? Yuhi, I'm not too sure. So yuhi means like evening light, basically. So it's not necessarily the sun in itself, but the sun is like mostly down, basically. The evening, the sunset is basically what it means. Now, shizuka, she, oops, what, I, what, did, what did I click? Hmm? Hmm? Sorry. That's the, uh, I am confused how to make this full screen again. This this looks close enough. Uh, what is going on? Okay, okay, so we're back here. So um, Shizuka, what? I definitely had. Sorry, technical issues. All good. All good. Okay. Shizuka, which has this kanji, Shizuka, means quiet. 
But we, what we have here is si zu mu, the verb, si zu. And this verb, do you have any idea what it could mean if it doesn't mean quiet? Shizu. Uh, I don't. So shizumu means to sink. And you can kind of look at the picture. We have like a water and I don't know, like maybe this is the surface of water right here and there's someone drowning right there. Nice, all right. I don't know if that will help. Now, hajimete. So hajimete um, can mean for the first time ever. Um, I do think we believe, I believe we use a different kanji when we do it that way, but I'm not sure about that. But in this context, when it's a verb stem form, ha shizumi plus hajimete. Uh, shizumi comes from shizumimasu, right? The stem form is the is what happens when you delete mas compared to mm -hmm. shizumi. So stem form plus hajimete means to start something. So the yuhi, do you remember what that meant? What is yuhi? Uh, evening light. Yes, yeah, so the evening light begins to sink across from the forest. Is what this is. So the sun has, we knew from an earlier lesson that the sun has already started to set. But now not only has the sun started to set, but the evening light is also starting to sink. So it most likely the sun is kind of already gone, I would say. And all what's left is the sunset colors. Yeah, okay, the orangish. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> Orange and the pinks. Um, so we've seen lots of ni kiku or ni katamuku and all the things, which kind of means toward. However, when something becomes ni naru, this kind of means to become. For example, what do you think this means? Can you read it for me? So to become an adult. Yes, exactly. And I thought I'd read this little line from you from a random different book called Penguin Highway, which is uh, a book that has lots of easy vocabulary, but kind of tends to have complex grammar. Which means, for example, um, until I become an adult, uh, well, it's the eyes over there in Oto is there. Uh, there is still a long amount of time, is what it is. Interesting. So there's a lot, there's a long amount of time that's going to go before I can become an adult. Uh, do you want to read it? Uh, all right. So, Toeba. Yes. Perfect. Oh, hi. Uh, so, ninaru basically means to become. Uh, so now, right over here, I have kudu again. And do you know what kudu normally means? Uh, kuru means a bear, right? Uh, that's kuru, kuma. Kuma means bear. Uh, my goal was more, um, I'm gonna clear this and go back a page. Do, do, do. Is more of the kuru as an oi kakete kuru. What is the kuru doing in that word? The kuru in this case, I think it brings the attention towards the uh what's it called the not the narrator but the subject kind of so we have a subject and a narrator and in this context they're different things they're different things what direct where is um what is the subject doing when we hear kudu like where is he going he's going towards yes kudu just has a meaning of going towards the um, narrator when the subject is different. Um, however, sorry, sometimes both the narrator and the um, subject are kind of the same thing, 
When this happens, it can have different meanings. For example, kanjo, when there's some kind of emotion, such as with uh, naru becomes natte. So right here we have shinpai ni natte kita. You know what shinpai means? Shinpai means uh, to worry. Yes. So um, this kind of means that your this emotion kind of started a little bit in the past, but has right in the present become more like important. So it kind of makes it like it was a small little bud, but now it's a monster kind of um, meaning. So it kind of insinuates there's a seed and then boom. Suddenly kind of. Suddenly. Uh, it's a, so it's a little different than suddenly in that it's not like there's nothing and then there's something. It, it kind of just has a like, you're a little worried, but now the worry has finally like really hit you and you're like, ooh, I am shimpai. Yeah. So it's kind of like you, like you felt the emotion before, but there's now a spike and you're at the, you've, you've, you've acknowledged that you feel this now. Is kind of what it, the kita adds. So shinpai ni natte kita means to um, feel worried. And then there's just a little connotation that he felt a little worried before, but now he's now he's really worried. And he's like, whoa. But yeah, that's just like more context. You can't really translate that, I don't think. <laughs> so it makes sense, why, yeah. Yeah, so, some, so that's why it's hard to say shinpai ni natta just means to become worried like there's none of that like connotation of longer period before so all together what does this say um mozuku or yeah mozuku kigaku rekia yo rekia yo chao has the same meaning as of shimao okay um, Chuck, what shin, uh, shin pony, not take that. Shin pony, oh, shin pony, shin pony. He pie, shin pie, ah, shin pie, me, not take that. So, what does more sugu mean? What sugu again, kind of more itchy do. So mo has a kind of more kind of meaning, but in this case, sugu is the most important part here. So sugu has to do with time. What do you think it means? So mo sugu, so just time. So uh, like almost? Yes. Sugu means soon. So like the time has almost arrived, basically. Mosugu, which means super soon. How about Higa Kureru? What do you think that means? Higa Kureru. Kure. 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 You know what uh, he means? Uh, no, no, not in Sana. Oh, Nichiyobi. Do you know what that is? Onichiyobi. Just curious. I do not. Uh, Nichiyobi is Sunday. And Nichi. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sun, and he also means like sun. It means like sun or day. It, it has like both meanings. So the day or the sun, it, it, it is kureru, which basically means to kind of grow dark in this context. So we saw in the last sentence that the sun is has like basically set it and the evening light is starting to fade. So he got kure chao. What does that mean? He got kure chao. Huh. The closest word I could come up with would be like uh kakeru, but I don't think that could be related to this. Mm. So kureru from he ga kureru, the kureru part means to grow dark, kureru. 
So what does it mean for a day to grow dark? So like after midnight, or sorry, not after midnight, after sunset. Yep, that, that's all it means. So there's still a little bit light in the sky, but he's saying, oh no, that's the, the child part. Oh no, um, really soon it's going to be dark out. It's going to be super duper dark. Oh no, that's what Jack it says out loud for some reason and then what happened what did jack start to feel so jack was not uh so he not what does not take they mean? hmm I do not know what that means um maybe what, suddenly oh like uh shin pai ni naru. do you know what that means shin pai ni naru. To become worried. <clears throat> yes. So what happened with Nadu is that it became Natte. And then we added Kudu at the end. Natte. Kita. It's just the past tense because they're doing different things because it's a book. So what uh, was Infaini Natte Kudu mean? So he became worried. Or, yeah, he became worried. Do you remember how these two are a little bit different? Uh, Nadu and Dekudu. We talked a bit kudu. about Kudu. So it approaches him. So he suddenly felt worried. Yeah, basically. And Kita is just past tense. You can see the sudden like hit him that he felt hurry, worried, I guess. He felt a little worried before, but now it just he feels it. And he's like, oh. Um, now we're going to be talking about something called vol, vol, voltational form. Sorry, I can't read things. <laughs> English musogoshi. Um, this right here basically means let's. Like, let's go see something. Let's look. Let's come. Let's eat or anything, anything like that. And this form is very, pre it's pretty easy to make. If you have a do verb, as in taberu, all you do is add yo. Tabeyo, which means let's eat. Tabeyo. Um, if you have the other guys, basically anything that is not a do verb, you just take the last letter like ku and you add o to it. So for example, um, what does kaku mean? Do you know that? Uh, kaku. Mm, I do not. It means to write. So I'll do a different one. I'll do yomu. Oh, kaku. Yeah. So what does yomu mean? Yomu means to read. Yeah. <clears throat> and if I wanted to read with you, I would say yomo. So the mu would turn into mo. We keep the m mm sound, but we add an o and take out whatever u sound was there. Yomo. Yomo. So what does yomo mean? Uh, let's read. Exactly. Um, what does oboidu mean? Oboidu. Avoid it means to study. Basically, it means to like set to your memory. To, to memorize, basically. To memorize. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah. So um, it can be used in like certain contexts to kind of mean the study, but it does not mean the act of studying. It just means to commit something to memory or to remember, which can be related. Like certain contexts, is a, it probably is used for that. Um, how would you turn this into? Let's remember. Uh, we would say, wait, it become oboyo. Yes, perfect. Oboyo. How about kansatsuru? Kansatsuru become kansatsuyo. Yeah, shio, kansatsuyo. How about kaidu? Kaidu, I have the mask form here for kaidu to let you know that this is an u verb. It's just an R plus an U, not a do. How would this, how would you do this guy? Kaeru. So, kaeru. It'd be kae, but it wouldn't be ryo. What would so, we do? Hmm. Um, kaeru. It'd be kaeru. Kaeru. 
And do you know what kaeru means? Uh, to return, like exactly. kaeru, home. Exactly. Perfect. Kaeru, which means. So, what would kaeru mean then? Uh, let's return. Exactly. So, right here we have kiku. What does that mean? Uh, kiku means to write. Mm, that's kaku. Kaku means to write. What does kiku mean? Kiku. kiku. I always forget this word. Um, kiku has to do with the ears. Oh, to listen. Yes. Kiku can mean to listen. So what about, what would be let's listen? Um, so that would be kiku or kiko. Kiko. Yes. It'd be kiko. There it is. Kiko. Let's listen. Perfect. So now I would like you, can you make the phrase, let's read a book? How would you do that? Let's read a book. Okay. So that would be, where is your, uh, there it is. Yomi masho. No, I feel like that would be at the end. So, <clears throat> so this is correct. It's more polite, but that is correct for the reading part. And then. Oh, hon. Oh, hon. So, how is yo used? What is, what is yo? What does that mark? Uh, kind of like the subject, but it says that the book is being, or the reading is being performed on the book. Yes. So, where do particles get attached to things in Japanese? Uh, at the end. Yes. So, in this case, it'd be hon o. You cannot say ohon. Does not work like that. The particle always goes right after whatever it is being attached to, which it is attached to the hon. So hon o yomimashou, which means let's read a book. How would you say this more friendly, less uh, professional? Uh, hon o yomimas, or just yomu. No, you can't say yomu. Uh... The yo yomi. part is right. How do we add the shio part but make it more friendly? Yomi. Mm. Mas. Mm. So mu mm. has an u sound. You know what sound it gets replaced with? U. Uh, so yomu. Should be an o sound. So does that help a little bit more? O. Yomu. Kind of just stretch it out. Mo is what it means. Yo mo. That's yo it. Mo. Yeah. Let's read. Yo mo. Yo mo. So we add mo or yo. Well, we add, we add o, basically, or yo, depending on what it is. So I'm going to go back a page. There you go. Oh. Uh, okay. So right over here, we have kaeru. What does that mean? To return. Yes. And how do we turn that into let's return? Uh, kaeru. Kaeru. Exactly. Perfect. So you see right over here, we just added the O sound. Oh. Okay. How about let's absorb nature? How would you say that? Uh... Kansatsu. Do I have to make not yet? So, Kansatsu o. Oh no, I have to make a, a volition form first. So, Kansatsu. That's really close, and I'll give you the points for that because um, it is uh, irregular. So, in this case, it'd be Shio, but that's just because this is irregular. Uh, so I'll give you points because you did remember how it uh, was formed. So, um, and then oh, she's in. Oh, she's in. Something seems a little wrong about this. What is wrong about that? Consatio or she's in. Oh, is it the other way around? Probably. So how would you say yeah. this? Yeah. So. Uh, she's in or Kansatsu. 
Perfect. We're gonna type it all. We, we got it. Perfect. Yes. Do do do. So what does this say? Uh Ani Mo Kairu. Kairu? Uh Kairo. Yes. What does that mean? So Ani just returned. Actually it doesn't. What was the form you just learned? Kairo. All right. So Ani, let's return. Exactly. And the mo kind of adds like, let's go already. Come on. Um, so right up here is a little refresher. We have kudu and iku. Do you remember how these things are different? So right here we have someone skipping. Um, if it was kudu, where would the narrator be? Would it be in front of the skipping girl or behind the skipping girl? So if it's kudu, it would be in front. Yes, perfect. Exactly. How about if it was Iku? Where would it be? Uh, behind. Exactly. Perfect. Nice. Um, so now, could you make the phrase, a monster is chasing us? Well, chasing, and it has like the insinuation it's coming toward um, the speaker. So a monster is coming. Um... Uh, kaiju and then coming so waikakeru no what is that uh skip the important shite. part here i would say is the chasing part which would be not uh is it kakurete i don't think so kakurete means to hide all right Kaiju is a monster or something big. Yes. Oikakete, which is hide and seek. Oika, that, that is kakurenbo. Kakurenbo oh. is hide and seek. Uh, I'm guessing it means uh, chasing, right? It does. Oikakete means chasing. So how do we make this into an actual phrase? Kaiju, and we have oikakete. What is missing here? Um, so it would be kaiju uh, kuru oikakete. Or no, so the other way around. gets attached to the verb. So where does it go? After the te, and then you'd bring the kaiju after that. So ka So that is not incorrect. You could say oikakete kuru kaiju. You could say that. That is perfectly good Japanese, kaiju. This is 100% beautiful. That's something a native Japanese person would absolutely say. Oi kakete kuru kaiju. This means, though, a monster who is chasing me, kind of, the whoever's speaking, a monster who is coming to chase us. It kind of has a kind of who kind of meaning to it. So it's less a phrase and more of a noun phrase. If that makes any sense? It's like less of a sentence and more of making a really long, cool, cool noun. What if I wanted it in this order? What particle would be attached to kaiju? Uh, kaiju wa? Yes. You could also do ga, depending on how uh, important you want kaiju to be. I would argue that maybe ga might be better. Kaiju ga oikakete kuru. Just because I feel like kaiju is important. Yeah, some more emphasis. <laughs> Since it's chasing us. Uh, but you could say wa, especially if you're like not scared of monsters and you're just like, there's a monster chasing us. Me. Um, so we learn te kuru, which means to come. Then we have konai. So kuru. Is an irregular verb. We got kuru, which means to come. Kita, which means came, as in the, with a ki, but it means to have come. And now we have konai, which means not to come. For example, what does this say? The text right up there. 
Um, こっちゃきて。こっちきて。こっちきて。So, quickly,、uh, quickly come. Basically, こっち means here or toward me, basically, is what it means. So, it means come here, basically. It's something someone might say to their cat. こっちきて。However, what happened? Can you read this? あこっちへ、くないかって。くないかった。くなかった。くなかった。そう、ひでねんか。Yes, exactly. So, こない、right over here, we took off the E and did かった for past tense. But yeah, こない means to not to come. So, this is an interesting thing to use when you thought something was go- coming toward you, but it did not do it. こっちへ、こなかった。It did not come over here. So, how would you say a monster is chasing us, basically? It's chasing, but like coming toward the speaker, the ne- whoever's talking. So, a monster is chasing us. So, now that would be, uh, what was the word? Kaiju, or rather, kaiju ga. Uh, kaiju ga. Coming towards us, that would be suru. That actually would be kuru. Kuru, sorry. Yeah, kuru. What if the monster will not come to chase us? So that would be、uh, kaiju ga、uh, kakite masen. No, kakite.、Uh, oh, The, the kakete imasen is kind of correct, but in this case, I'm looking for the negative form of kuru. Oh, so we could just say the other way, and that would be iku. It act- so, iku means that a ch-、uh, the monster chased something away from us, is what that means. Oh, so it's still chasing. It's still chasing something, but it will, it's going away from us. But over here, it's more like it will not chase us, is more what it means, or will not chase toward us for whatever reason. So, I want the negative form of kudu.、Mm. It's not kudu nai, is it? I mean, Close. It is ko. Then what's the next part? Konai. Konai. Hai. Kaiju ga oi kakete konai. Which means the monster will not chase us, basically. It will not chase toward us. It will not come toward us while doing chasing for whatever reason.、Uh, next is temo. So, temo can look like demo, depending、yeah. on the kanji, but it does not mean demo. It does not. But what does demo normally mean? It means but. Yes, it does mean but. So, temo, which can look like demo, it's basically te form plus mo, is what this is. So, for example, what is the te form of yomu? Do you remember?、Uh, yotte, not yotte. It was yomimashite. It's actually yonde. Ah, yonde. Yonde. So, temo form would be yondemo. What we're doing is adding a mo to te form. So, because of that, it can look like demo, but it's not. They, they are not the same thing. They just happen to look similar. So, te form plus mo. And this means basically even if. So,、um, we already got ani, mo, kairo. Now, what does this part mean? Can you read it for me?、Uh, shiburaku. Matemo, Matemo. Ah, Ani wa Modo te ku nai. Modo te ku nai. Yes. Ku nai. Hmm. So, Shiburaku. Sounds like a name. So, Shiburaku is a time phrase that means like, kind of like for a while. For a while. Okay. You know what Matte means? It's from Matu or Matte. Might have heard, Matte kurasai in an anime. It's like, wait, yeah. It does mean to wait. 
So what does shibaraku matemo mean then? If it's a while plus wait plus temo. So, hmm. can you wait a while? So she's not asking if you can, like, can you? It's instead it's more, even if you wait a while. Oh. Then, aniwa motote uh. konai. You know what Aniwa motote. Uh, I do not know what mudotte means. So, modoru from modotte means to return. So it's kind of like kairu. But kairu tends to be more like let's go home. So when he goes ani mo kairo, this has more of a connotation of let's go all the way home than just come back. It's so it's like kind of more strict in a way. Yeah. So that's why they're using modotte because she's not doing the modotte toward you know Jack and the invisible narrator over so that's why we have konai what does konai mean uh konai means uh toward the direction of the narrator basically yes and do they do it or do they not do it konai so they didn't do it yes so they will not do the verb in the direction of the narrator. So, and the verb in this case is modoru. So she will not return toward the narrator. So yeah, things that we would never care about at all in English, but very important in Japanese. Very important. Yeah. Um, so this all together, wh what do you think this means? All together. Uh, so even if, uh, Shibura Mateimo or Matemo. Kind so, even if you wait, yes, even if you wait, Annie will not go towards the speaker. Basically, yes. So, no matter how long you wait, Annie will not come back. All right, for the speaker. <laughs> um, so now I'm doing a another sentence to sentence practice. Can you do me a favor and tell me how would you say Jack read a book and then observed nature in Japanese using to form? To between so, um, hon o, yeah, hon o, but then we have to say Jack read. So, uh, hon o, uh, yomu. And then you would say to. Yeah. Uh, shizen wa kansatsu. Perfect. Now, how about uh, could you put this in um past tense for me? Kansatsu. Uh, the, oh yeah, the kansatsu. So <clears throat> kansatsu o not rather shizen o kansatsu shimashita. No, shimatta. Yeah. Simashita is correct. Simata would be kind of incorrect because unless like he could he could you could say this if you wanted to convey the meaning that he was supposed to go home right away after school, but then he got distracted and read a book and then he was like, oh, look at the nature. I want to absorb it. Then you could use Shimata because you wanted to convey that like, oh, he was supposed to do something else. But instead he did these things. But I see. Ashita is more correct for this specific purpose. And if you want Past to sense. do it more um, friendly, you use shita. Just deleting the mash part. Just shita. Shita, yep. So can you all together, can you read this for me? Jack wa hon o yomu to, or yeah, yomu to, shizen o. Uh, she's an oh, shimatta, not shimatta, shita. Kansatsu. Kansatsu shita. Perfect. Great memory for toe. Um, so can you do me a favor and read this guy? Um, ani exclamation mark. 
あソルトソルトのあシロシルそうシルトアニーの恋が書いて書いていくた。So right here we have that to the suru as you can see it's a verb so it kind of insinuates this is a sentence アニーとしましたー whatever in this case you're using suru to the mean、um, he did that action <laughs> he did something suru to he did it and then is what it means suru to so Annie did something and then Annie,、uh, he returned or rather she returned. The subject here is actually Jack. It's a little hard to tell, but Annie has ran off into the woods. She is gone.、Oh, yeah. And Jack goes, Oh no, Annie. <laughs> and, Annie. Then, and then we have a koi. What does koi mean? Koi. That koi. Kanji looks really familiar, but I can't recognize from where. So, koi. If you want to you something, you need a koi normally, unless you want to use your hands to do it. Interesting. So, mouth something. Your, well, I guess it's in your kubi. kubi. <laughs>、uh, do you know what a kubi、mm. is? No. Kubi means neck. Oh. So, what do you think koi means if kubi means neck? And it's something kitsio and very important in order to speak. Your voice? Yes. Oh, yeah, koi, koi voice, koi. right. So, whose voice? So, Jack's voice. Actually, what are you doing? Oh, Anino. Yes. Anino. Anino's voice. So, Jack did this. He said, Ani. And then. Annie's voice, it kaete kita. And this kaete is very similar to kaeru. And we saw like this, as in kaete, which means to go home. But it doesn't mean go home. Do you remember what it means? It's very similar. Kaete. Hmm. A lot、Not、like the order from an earlier sentence. So it's like. Not coming back. We're going, but not coming back. So it means coming back. The thing that came back is the koi. Ah. So Annie did not come back, but her voice did. So the voice is a thing, right? It's not a person, it is a thing. Things, when they come back, they use kaite with this kanji, the kanji that's written right over there. So, this kaite just means to return or come somewhere, basically. So, she basically responds to the ani with her own voice. She says something, which we're going to see in the next line. And the kita, what is that telling us? So, suddenly, or not suddenly, but like not suddenly. immediately. Like, where did the voice return to? All right. So, it returned. Towards the speaker. Exactly, which in this case is around Jack. He's the most important person.、Uh, so now we're learning another thing that te form can do. Te form can make orders. And、um, could you do me a favor and make yomu into a te form?、Mm. So, yonde. No, that would be different.、Perfect. Yonde is correct.、Oh. Yonde. Boom, you're done. <laughs> that, that was easy. That is an order. Yonde. You can make it polite and say, Yonde kudasai. Yonde kudasai, which means please read. Or you can make it more rude, like, Yonde nas. Yon nas. Whatever. I, I'm going to skip that. So, Yonde by itself just means do it.、Um, how about kudu? Which means to come. How would you make that into te form?、Uh, It's irregular.、Uh, go してのごえて It starts with a key. So, what's the next part? Ah,、uh, kite. Yes, kite. Just kite. So, that means to come. How about kantatsu? What would it mean? Absorb. I mean, observe. Observe, yeah. How would you say so, that? 
観するって。観察 Alright, I have to get rid of it. So, yeah. Because this is irregular. I'm just like quizzing you on the irregular ones. <laughs> Kuru and Sudu are, are annoying irregular guys. Um, how about <laughs> Kiku? This one is pretty predictable. Do you kind of want to Kite, yes. Kite. Kite, which means listen to me. Kite. Hmm. Kite. Uh. <laughs> so, with that, can you do me a favor and read this line that Annie says? Um, Oni san. Right. No, that's Oni chan. Oh, yep. <laughs> Oni chan. Uh, Chiotto or Chotto kite. Yep. Kite. Kite. This e eh is just letting you know she's kind of saying it long. Has no meaning. Kite. Kite. So, Onichan, so big brother, please listen. Uh, is this kite or kite? It is kite. Yes, yeah, so it's not kite. Kite with a long e is to listen. Long E. This is a short E. Kite. You remember? Kind of how to do with da we saw before and a kudu. Ah, towards. Yes. So this means come toward me. So come. Chotto kite. Which, big brother, please come. Come, come right now. But no, please. She, she's kind of ordering him. She's like, come right now, big brother. Like now. Yeah. Now come. Chotto kite. Um, and I want to go back. Wait.、Uh, yes. How would you say a monster is coming and they like the monster is chasing me toward the speaker? Monster. So, uh, kaiju, wa, or rather, kaiju ga, uh, okakite suru. It's not suru. What is this? What, what, what is it? Kite. This part right here is correct, but it's not sudo. We would say kite then? Or kite? You can say kite.、Um, it, that would be the mother monster shall chase. You order it to do it. You monster chase toward me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you would do that, but you could <laughs> theoretically.、Um, uh, kuru would make more sense, or kita, as in the monster already did the chasing. How about what if we wanted to say the monster will not chase toward us, the speaker? Will not chase us. So, hmm. <clears throat> Kaiju ga. o k a k i t e o k a k i t e What was the word? It was kinai. Not kinai. Close. It actually has a ko. So what would it be? Ah, a、uh, kota. No, that's、okay. actually not right. Is it? No. Not right. It's not kota. What is it? Uh, uh, uh. Kote.、Mm, so it's not right. It earlier with the wrong front part. Not kunai. Oh, pretty sure I said that. You said kunai, which was wrong. But what, let's see, ku. Sorry, my, my thing is like, didn't wonder. Okay. So you said kunai, like you took kuru and you added nai. Now, this is super、yep. duper close. The only difference the issue is that it actually is ko. So it's konai. Konai. You might have heard konai de. Or something like that. Yeah. Means, Come. Basically, they turned it into、um, like a te form to make it into a mede, an order to say, do you shall not come. Like you said over here, you said, you shall chase me. Kite. So you might say, Oi konai konai, 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 Would be, it's okay not to come. <laughs> you don't need to chase me. Hi. 
and it is time. So we ended right there at Oni-chan, totoki, which is Big Brother. Come here a second. And I'm gonna stop 